how that plays out. Look at verse number 14. The Bible says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Pastor Versions, why are we reading this chapter? What is the point? Why are we going over this passage? We've read this many times before. Because you need to ask yourself, you know, is what you believe is it, is it real? Is it there? Are you going to back it up with some works and actually bolster that and have a lively faith, demonstrating your faith in what, in what it is that you believe, in what you say is your priorities, and you say that you believe in God, and you say you want to do what's right? Are you really backing that up, or are you just giving lip service to it? Are you just going to tell people you have faith and not back that up with any action? Because if that's all you're doing, I'm not saying that you don't really believe, of course. I'm not going to you know, make that claim against people. But what good does that do to anybody? What good does that do to anyone? It's just like saying, hey, be warm, be filled, and doing nothing for that person. You can say until you're blue in the face, no, but I really love God. No, but I really want to serve God. But, you know, I can't. Because, excuse, 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 excuse. I really want to be there, but I can't. I really want to read, but I can't. I really want to memorize, but I can't. I really want to do this, but I can't. Do you really? Or is your faith dying? Or is it dead? If your faith is dead, that's a, that's a big problem. You need to work on that. And we need to make sure that we don't allow our faith to even start to die. It's a bad place to be in. Obviously, if you're saved, you're saved forever. You don't lose that. But you don't want your faith to die. Amen. I've been there. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to be there. It's not a good place to be. It, it causes you to doubt. It causes you to question. It causes you not to have joy, not to be in the Spirit, not to have all the fruit of the Spirit when you're not walking in the Spirit. 